Hi everyone. Can you read that? Absolutely not, right? Okay, let's change the color scheme a bit. Better? Okay, fine. Um, hi everyone. Uh, I just got here. I woke up at 4 a.m. to come here. Uh, I now feel like an idiot um, because I obviously missed something absolutely amazing. Um, I'm also um, quite embarrassed to sort of be a sort of tacked on at the end here after what was clearly quite an inspirational talk. Um, so I apologize for how stupid this one is going to be. Um, anyway, uh, this is a talk that I've been thinking about for a little while. I'm preparing it. It's going to be uh, probably an hour to an hour and a half long. And what I've done for you guys is try to compress it to 12 minutes. And the way I've done that is not by cutting anything out, which is my plan to talk faster. So uh, I apologize to anyone who doesn't speak English natively. Um, uh, please ask me questions afterwards and I'll explain slowly. Uh, my name is Harry. I've written a book about testing. You can find it at obeythetestinggo.com. Uh, and here's a question. Who knows what outside-in TDD is? Okay, this is going to go great. Um, who has been following the whole DHH, uh, TDD is dead, Heinemeyer Hansen, the inventor of Ruby? Right, a few people. Now, who agrees with him? Right, excellent. Okay, who disagrees? Who's got no idea what all this is all about? <laughs> right, okay. And just another thing to gauge the, the, the room, like who, uh, knows what, who doesn't know what a mock object is? Or wouldn't know how to use one. Does not know. Who does not know what a mock object is? Fine, okay. So, not three, okay, wait, we're gonna be fine. Okay, so we're gonna go through this. Um, this is gonna be a talk about uh, outside in TDD, and it's gonna be used as an illustration of uh, test isolation and mocking and what DHH is talking about, what that whole controversy is. I hope to give you a sort of worked example and illustration so you can understand all that and try and form your own opinions based on what I find the most, you know, the most uh, uh, informative when you're talking about these things, is have a concrete example. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. It is basically chapters 18 and 19 of my book, which I encourage you to read. It's free, and I mentioned I'm writing a book. Um, you can read it. It's free. Uh, and if you're coming to my tutorial tomorrow, there are things you must install. So if you notice nothing else, please notice that. Right. Uh, so without further ado, let's imagine we've built a web application uh, that's, say, a to-do list app, because we've got no imagination. Okay, so you can get some to-do lists, right? You can enter a sort of item in there. You type it in, it's going to save it to the database, and you're going to make a uh, sort of to-do list. Like, it's super, super simple. Um, it might be based on a model like a bit like this. Uh, simplest imaginable to-do list application. There's a sort of parent list class, and then you have items, which you can have a foreign key to that list. You can have multiple items per list. The items hold the text, the list groups them all together. You can have multiple lists, they've got multiple items. Okay, so far, to-do list app. You can imagine how you build that in Django, it's going to have views for creating a new list, adding items to an existing list, uh, viewing a list of all its items, and so on. Super simple, right? Um, so, uh, let's imagine that our users come along and they're logged in and they're like, Harry, this is nice, I, I see how you've got to-do lists there, uh, but they're all anonymous, right? We would like to know what our to-do list is. Like, if we log in, we would like to save our list, to be our list, and view them on a page, right? That's a requirement, that's our new requirement. So that's what we're going to develop today uh, with outside in TDD. Okay. Um, so, outside in TDD, you might be thinking as you're thinking this, like, a, how would you develop this thing? How would you add um, the idea of like a my lists page to this existing model of just two, um, two things? Like, what would you do? Anyone? Okay, so, like, if you're like me, you're thinking, right, I want lists to have owners, so I'm probably going to have, like, maybe an owner attribute on the list model. Um, and I'm going to build that and then make some tests for it, and then I'm going to build some views that add an owner to a list and so on and so forth. And that is what we call traditional development or inside out. What I'm going to contrast that with is outside in. So in outside in development, what you do is you start from the outside and you work in. Uh, and what does that mean? Like, so have you ever done the thing where you go, right, well, let me build some building blocks on my application. I'm going to have a model here, a little uh, function over there, and then I'm going to join them all together at the end, and then I'm going to build the UI. And you realize that you've got there and there's a whole bunch of stuff you've built that you're not actually using. Because you thought you needed it, and you didn't. Or you've built a whole bunch of stuff that's not quite perfect for the way the UI's turned out in the end. Outside in TDD is designed to sort of deal with that problem by saying, we'll design from the outside in, we'll design from the point of view of the user, we'll design starting with the presentation layer, we'll go down through view functions and down to the model, and at each stage, the layer above is going to justify the code we have to lay below. And that means that every single bit of code you have is justified by, uh, by a sort of user interaction. Uh, right, so we have that. Um, and like, what, what I'm going to do for, uh, to demonstrate this test is I'm taking the book and I've rendered it to HTML and then I've turned all the body text to color white so you can't see it. And so the only thing you can see is the code examples. So what we start with is a functional test. Okay, so this functional test is going to open up a web browser, it's going to go navigate the page, it's going to meet the user, it's going to say, oh, I'm going to start a new list. 
I'm going to add some items to it, and I'm going to suddenly notice there's a buy this button. If I click on the buy this button, I spot a list of lists. They're all named after the first item in the list I've created. I can click on them, verify they already exist. If I log out, the buy this page disappears, and so on. That's a functional test that's going to run with Selenium. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, is I like build that and then run it. And what I'm going to do is I can see if fail. The first failure is, OK, the very first thing it tries to do is uh, click on a thing called my list, which doesn't exist in my app yet. So we start with outside in. The way to fix that failure is not to sort of dive in and start building new models and whatnot. We um, go straight to the presentation there. We add a link to the main page, which goes, ah, here's a my list link. It doesn't actually do anything, but we started with our first element in UI. OK, so then we move on from that. Uh, we're going to go run the test again. They're going to say, right, I clicked on my list and it doesn't work. I can't find any list there. So you go, OK, fine. Well, if I'm going to need a list page, I'm going to need a URL for it. So again, this is outside there. So I build my URL. That's going to cause template syntax errors. So that justifies the first unit test. In the first unit test, by the way, if you've got places to go, please don't hesitate to leave. I won't be um, uh, annoyed. Uh, I know I'm on last. Uh, so, uh, you've got um, uh, this page, you're going to you check it renders a template. All right, fine. Does it render a template? What do I do? It run it, doesn't work, no templates. Fine. Um, add a URL, so far so good. Right. Um, add a view does not exist, I create my view, and I'm going to finally create a template. So you can see each bit is being driven by the functional test, it's being driven from the outside. And what happens next? I hear you ask. Well, again, it's still not working because that page doesn't actually have any lists on them. So what are we going to want to do? We just mess around with our templates a little bit. We've got that. Um, so we're going to uh, go to our my list page, and then we start designing our applications from the outside in. People sometimes refer to outside in development as programming by wishful thinking. Right? You start designing things, and, like, and you wish you had some collaboration objects that work like this, or you wish you had a model that worked like that. So I'm just going to write my template. I'm going to put into it stuff that I wish I had. I wish that in my template there was an owner variable that represented the owner. And I wish that I was able to get to all their lists using a sort of owner of this set of all, which conveniently I'm going to get from Django right? And I wish that I could get to a sort of list of name, which would magically be um, the first item's text. And so none of that exists yet, right? But I can build it, and that template works. Uh, and the next thing I know is that template requires an owner. So uh, to get an owner, I'm going to write my second. Uh, unit test, which is going to say, OK, let's imagine there's a couple of users. I'm going to go and fetch a page for a particular user. It's identified by email. Um, I'm going to check the context passes the owner in. Fine. Does that work? No. Um, and then I can go and write the uh, view function slowly. It's going to go and fetch the email, retrieve the user object, um, and uh, so on. So, like, fine. I've got one view that works. If there's a user and he has an email address, I can display them and render them in a template, and they will show their list if they have any. But Owners don't have lists. There's still no link between them at all. Um, so the next thing I have to do is actually make a view. So I'm not yet, still not, I'm not going to make a relationship between lists and owners yet. I'm only going to make a view that is going to try and associate an owner with a list. So here's my new list view, which already exists. I'm going to add a new test to it. So it's right, let's suppose a logged in user. Um, I call a new list with a post request that should create a new list. I fetch the list out of the database. And now I would like it to have an owner attribute that represents the user. So what happens at that point? If I run that test, it doesn't have the attribute of owner. And I can actually implement it at that point and just do this. OK, fine. I've got a form that can save items. I create a new list. And I actually, in my real code, I try and associate the request for user with the owner. And I run it and so on. Do you guys know what will happen next? Hmm? It doesn't work. No, absolutely not. So um, our app list has no attribute of owner because still, I fetch the list to the database. The database doesn't know anything about owners. And it doesn't work. So this test is failing. Right, and it's going to keep failing until I go down to the next layer, which is now we're allowed to go down to the models layer, and we start writing some tests for this having owners. Okay, so so far so good. Now this can have owners, blah, blah, blah. Owners are about a keyword argument. I add a foreign key. I add a test that the only owners are optional. I add, um, you know, so there's the blank equals true, none equals true. God, that's complicated in Jagger. Blank equals true, none equals true. Who understands that? <laughs> is Andrew even in here? Like, no one understands that. Right, good. Um, so, uh, there you go, we're using Java 1.7, so it cracks out because there's no migration for it. Hooray, we can make migrations, thank you, Andrew. Um, and uh, <laughs> what happens next? Um, we can have a round of applause for Andrew at the migrations for but everything is going to be Everything's going to be so lucky to have. Oh my god, what happens next? I run my test, everything explodes! Um, what's happening is I'm always saving the owner, and sometimes the owner's not logged in, and you can't have an anonymous user assigned to a list. So my test actually helped me there. It told me that my code is broken, and I need to put it up if. So if 
um, you know, is authenticated, um, then I'm going to uh, sort of save it, and so on, then we get to pass a unit test, uh, and then we can just go ahead and build a little name attribute, blah, 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 um, and we get to it working by this page. Hooray! We're outside the team. Who spotted uh, what I did wrong? Who spotted the deliberate mistake? Anyone? It's all too slow. How much time have I got left? Okay, perfect. Loads of time. Uh, fine, next. Uh, so, uh, what happens next is I showed that chapter. This is my chapter on outside in TV. I was really pleased with it. And I showed it to a man called Gary Bernhardt. Has anyone ever heard of Gary Bernhardt? Right, Gary Bernhardt knows more about testing uh, than I do. Um, I wish I'd found a, a cleverer metaphor for that. Never mind, he knows more about testing than I do. And he went, Harry, uh, you're an idiot. Um, this chapter is terrible. This is the worst imaginable way of teaching outside of TV. Um, you should not be writing a book. Um, and go and hide under a rock. Um, and uh, he suggested all sorts of reasons it was wrong. Uh, and one of the main ones that, uh, that it was was, you know, at the point at which I write my view and I try and assign the owner and I can't because the database doesn't, be, uh, doesn't know about owners yet, what I do is I leave that test failing. And it's like failing happily. And I go down to the models there, and I build out the models there, and I build owners, and then like, um, I get those tests passing, and then I can get the view tests passing. But, but all the while that I've sort of stopped working the views layer, I've got this failing test. And Gary's saying, look, it might get away with it in your three-layer application here. But if you had a really complicated app with multiple layers, can you imagine like getting your first layer of tests, and they're all failing, and then you go down to the next layer, um, and they depend on the layer below, and you haven't done the layer below yet, so all those tests are failing, and you go down to the layer below that, and all those tests are failing. Like seven layers, you have seven sets of tests, all failing. You don't know if any of your layers work until you get to the bottom. And effectively, what you're really doing is inside out, with sort of a bit of a bluffing outside in approach. Like, you really destroyed me. So, uh, what I did is I decided to just redo the whole chapter, um, revisit the point at which we went wrong, and do it all again with proper test isolation. Like, how do you get tests of one layer to pass, even though the layer below that doesn't exist yet. Anyone? Marks. Horrible marks. Oh, everyone hates marks, right? Um, so let's take a look at one. So here's our issue. testing is saved. Ta -da -da. Um, there was our implementation. Here was our error, and this was one we left failing. So how could we get this passing and prove to ourselves that views layer really works the way it does? You would start using marks. Uh, horrible. So we patch the list objects because there's a list of items they have to assign to each other. I'm actually mocking out the list class, but I'm making it return a real list object so it does have a uh, integrity uh, with the items that I create. I create a user object and I can get that going. And so, you know, that will actually get the test passing. But the thing is, that test actually leaves me open to making uh, a mistake, which is I accidentally assign the owner after I save. That test will still pass. So if I really want to do a proper mocky test of that thing, it actually looks like this. Oh, lovely. What we're just going to do is we're going to define a side effect function, which we're going to assign to the save method on the list object that we passed in, and then we're going to let it to check that the moment we call save, the attributes are set correctly. Like, what? That's horrible. And this is the reason people say, God, mocky tests are awful. But the um, thing you can do at that point is actually go, if your tests are really ugly, you should listen to your tests. All right, this is something that advanced TED people say. Now, I'm not an advanced TED person. I'm sort of parroting what they're saying. This is my half um, understood conception of what they're saying. They're saying, look, if you've got a really horrible market test, is there maybe a way of rewriting the thing you're testing to make it have less dependencies? So it needs less mocks to work. And I look at my view, which is like about eight lines long, and it creates a form, and it instantiates this, and it creates a list, and it optionally assigns the user, and I think, what? Couldn't I just write a much easier view? Like, what if my view looked like this? This is all it really needs to do, right? If, it, if I had a special form that was in charge of doing new lists, and I could just go uh, pass it in the post data, if it's valid, optionally pass it in a user into the same method. And I, that's a very standard django -y sort of view. You recognize that pattern, right? Like, if a form is valid, save, read, read, return. So I suddenly I'm back to the same pattern. Um, and if I'm writing tests for that, they look a lot easier, right? So, okay, I'm going to skip the old ones, blah, blah, blah. Um, I can start writing tests for that, and they look a lot more sane, right? I'm just patching out a form class. And then, you know, the kind of tests I write are really simple. They've got one assertion, they've got one mark, and they really say what they're doing. Um, so, really, sort of driving the problem down and trying to uh, make the, uh, sort of the design of code better. And if you basically got to the end of the last chapter and everything was passing and so on, um, 
but my code was pretty ugly. And so the point that I'm trying to make in this bit, I guess, is if you like, pursue test isolation and you listen to your tests, it might actually drive you towards making better design code. Because using box is so horrible, it forces you to identify your dependencies and push them down. So like, a kind of story that happens there is that you might um, you know, make some more tests in your form, da -da -da -da, uh, and then your view is going to get working. You can actually get fully passing tests in your view, uh, despite the fact that form class doesn't even exist. right? Um, and so then I can go down to let's render it. Oops. Uh, home template. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, here we go. Rendering the redirects. They're all simple. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, new history. Da -da -da. Right, because I built like a parallel new view function alongside the old view function to see if I can get them both working. Uh, all right. And so then I'm going to look at my list form. And it's going to do some sort of work like this. Right. This is what my form needs to do. Right. How much more time? Two minutes. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So the form, you know, the form needs to save on this, it needs to save an item. All right, we're going to go through that, and we start writing tests for that, and they're horrible and mocky as well, like, what's going on? Like, I have to patch out two model classes, and attack their save vendors, and so, again, what this is saying is listen to your tests, right? What this forces you towards is it forces you towards a pattern where you actually build help methods or help functions that are going to hide all that ORM stuff behind a nice, clean API. So in my form, rather than calling like list or items or create little objects, uh, the items are created, blah, blah, blah. What if I just had a function that went create new list, and it took like the new item text, and that lived in models.py, right? And then that's the thing that takes care of creating items and objects and whatnot. And so that's what your test can actually drive you towards. And then when you get down, so you can still write those code in isolated, you're mocking out one thing, which is your create new list function. And you get down to the models layer, and at that point, you can finally stop using your mocks. You've got to the models there, and in the models there, it's entirely appropriate to use the real database. Django's going to set up an amazing in there, we see quite database, those tests are going to be super fast, and you can actually get right down to the model there um, with full isolation, and you end up with much nicer looking code. If we go to the end of this chapter, um, there's a sort of comparison of the before and after, right? Uh, where's it gone? Da -da 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 not anywhere. Da -da -da. Thank you all so much uh, for bearing with me. Oh.